having faith in Jesus Christ means um, following and acting on the principles that you've learned in primary and young women's in your daily life. So you just have faith that these things that you learned about work and don't have faith that they'll work, then you should try following the things that we've taught you and you'll gain faith. When I think about having faith in Jesus Christ, I think mostly that um, He is a represent, representative of our Heavenly Father. It's so when I have faith in Jesus Christ. It's because I know that my Father in Heaven loves me. Um, he is the reason why we are able to do all that we can. He sent here for us to follow, to follow His example, to learn from, and to be like, so that we can be the people that our Father in Heaven wants us to be. Um, first of all, I wanted to read the scripture that goes along with the value of faith in your personal progress book. Um, it's Alma chapter 32, verse 21. And it says, Faith is not to have a perfect knowledge of things. Therefore, if you have faith, you hope for things which are seen, which are true, which are not seen, which are true. Now, that scripture to me means that when we were sent to earth, Heavenly Father knew that because of the nature of the, the plan and everything, that we wouldn't have a perfect knowledge of things, that the veil would be pulled over our eyes, and some of us may not have the knowledge of the gospel. But faith is knowing, faith to me is just knowing that there's a greater purpose, that our Heavenly Father has a plan for us, and that He will help us achieve that plan. I've never met Jesus Christ, but I have been in, what's the word, not in touch, but I've communicated through, to him through the Holy Ghost, and he's communicated to me. And so through that, I've gotten to know him, and through the scriptures, I've gotten to know him. And I know that he's real, because the Holy Ghost has um, let me know that he's real. Um, when I was younger, I got... Uh, I expected grand spiritual experiences. As I have grown older, I realize that most spiritual experiences are small events that could have passed unnoticed if I wasn't paying attention to the Holy Ghost. All my many little interactions with the Holy Spirit has combined to give me my testimony today. Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is the Savior of my body and soul. Heavenly Father loves you and me. The Holy Spirit will guide you throughout your life if you listen to his promptings. So for example, if you learn a lesson about being kind to someone and you don't have faith about being kind or you don't know if, if being kind will work and make a friend or whatever, then just try being kind. Try being nice. Try being um, you know, nice to someone in class that you've never talked to before and see how you feel after. And you'll get an answer. You'll feel good. When I have think about having faith in Jesus Christ and our Father in Heaven, I I'm reminded that that they are, they are in charge. Heavenly Father is in charge. And all the things that I think that I want, that I want now, that I think would be best for me, aren't always exactly what He wants me to have. Aren't ex always exactly what I need at the time. We had wanted another, another baby, and there wasn't one coming. We had waited and waited and waited, and finally... I'd kind of given up. It had been five years. Obviously, four children was what we were supposed to have. Even though it felt like there was supposed to be another. And we were given an opportunity to sing in Stake Women's Conference as a family. And that was fun and trying and kind of a big pain in the behind sometimes. But we grew as a family and it felt more complete. And felt like we were doing exactly what we were supposed to do. And um, one month later, we found out we were having a new baby. And I think that that was because we had finally done what we were supposed to. We had followed the example, the example of our Savior by having love and compassion for our family, even when things were silly and trying and kind of a little annoying to teach little ones a song and 
sit still during that two hour program, but it was what we were supposed to do and our lives are more perfect now and more full and we are to see daily how much our heaven loves us because we have such a fun little boy rounding out our family. Okay. <laughs> So uh, I was going to share a testimony about my faith in Jesus Christ. And I think for me that faith in Jesus Christ is something that's been a lifelong lesson. Like first, you believe it and so you act upon it and then it grows. Um, and time and time again, that's how it's been in my life. When my father passed away when I was nine, I think that that was a huge leap of faith. Um, to be supportive of my family and to have faith that my mom was praying and I was doing what was right. And then um, moving here was very hard. I was in high school. Um, and I think that that whole lesson in faith in Jesus Christ culminated um, with soccer. I was very involved in soccer all along. And then we moved here and I made only the JV team. When my team in New Mexico, I was a co-captain and we were ranked 11th in the nation. So for me, that was a huge backslide, and I couldn't understand when I was so devoted to not whining about moving and to being obedient and trying to be supportive of my mom and not not letting it get to me why things weren't working out for me. Because I went the whole season getting like no playing time. That was really upsetting to me as a junior in high school. You think it's like your glory day. <laughs> and. Um, it came down to the semifinal game at State. I actually went up with the varsity team. Um, my brother saved his grocery money from BYU for a week um, to come and watch me play. My mom traveled all the way from St. George to watch me play. My sister took off work to come and watch me play, and I did not get a single minute of playing time, like not a single second. And that was the last straw. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I went back to the hotel and called my mom and said, come and pick me up right now. I'm done. I finally just completely lost control. Um, I could not understand in my heart why Heavenly Father would not bless me when I was trying so, so hard um, to make a go of this and to make it good and to have a positive attitude. And it was all my mom could do to convince me to go back to the hotel and back with my team. And I was so angry um, that my prayers hadn't been answered and that my faith had been pushed so far that I was even doubting if the Heavenly Father was loving me if I had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, but that's where the atonement comes in because it doesn't just take care of the mistakes you make. It takes care of your hurt feelings. It takes care of your anger. It softens your heart again. The next day when I woke up, I went to the game, and I hadn't realized that my mom stayed up the whole night praying for me. Sometimes they say she reminds me of Alma's father, because she's very similar. She will pray until her prayers are answered. Um, and I warmed up for the game, and I was so angry. Like, my heart was gone. <laughs> I was just nailing the ball so hard every time it got past me and the coach was watching me warm up thinking, holy cow, she's on today because I was just nailing everything. I was so angry and it came to a point in the game where he said, Rice, get on the center line and he was subbing me in and I was so startled that he was going to give me playing time that I just jumped up and went in and not only was I going in, I was going in at midfield and he always played me at defense and I didn't like that as much. So I was so happy in midfield. I was going in, I was going to get a play in the state championship game and there was a play, a corner kick. The ball came in and every single time the ball bounced out <laughs> and I knew it was going to, like I didn't hear an audible voice, but I knew without a doubt that ball was bouncing out. And the coach called a play where everybody groups together and then runs in. And I was like, forget that. Every time it bounces out, I'm not running in. And I was still just angry and mad. And my heart was in a bad place. The ball bounced out and I nailed it with everything I had. Every ounce of frustration and anger and not understanding my relationship with my Heavenly Father, I hit that ball so hard. And on the video of the game, you can see the defender right in front of me go like this like duck out of the way of the ball because I hit it so hard. And we won that game one to zero. That was the only goal in that state championship game. I did not have any more friends after that game. The girls on the team did not like me any more than they did before. I was not the MVP. My life was in no way different except for that I knew Heavenly Father loved me and was aware of my needs. 
He pushed my faith to the point of breaking. He had so much more trust in me than I had in myself. And then he blessed me. So as you're thinking about your relationship with Jesus Christ and your relationship with Heavenly Father, don't give up on them because they surely have never given up on you. And they are testing you and pushing you as far as you need to to learn the lessons you need to learn. And then they will bless you. When I think of faith, I like to think of the parable in Matthew talking about the mustard seed. And um, I remember growing up, my grandma had a bracelet and on the bracelet was like a little globe and it had a mustard seed in it. And I remember being really little and asking, what is that? Why do you have that mustard seed? Like, why do you have that thing? And, and she said, oh, it's a mustard seed. It's to represent my faith that I have. And she wasn't a member of the church. And I always thought that was really cool and really interesting. And I always thought, um, it always helped me through my life growing up. Because at a young age, you feel like um, you're supposed to have all this faith that it's, and it's hard to get that faith. And to remember that it's okay if your faith is just small because it'll grow and bloom into a beautiful tree and a huge tree. And even on the days that I feel like my faith might be a little bit small, I always know that I have to continue having the faith so that the things that I need in my life will come and I'll be able to bloom and um, my faith can continues to grow throughout my entire life. And you're, it just continues and continues. And I think that's a great blessing in our lives. Gavin and I were really struggling with finances and everything. And I sat down to pay our tithing. <laughs> we didn't have very much money that month and um, Jens was still in diapers and um, I knew that he was almost out of diapers and that, um, sorry I'm getting teary thinking about this, I knew he was out of almost out of diapers and I knew that if I paid the tithing that month we wouldn't have any many diapers for him and a voice came into my head and said just pay your tithing it will be okay and I think that having faith is to act and to act on things that we know to be true. And I knew that I would be blessed if I paid our tithing. So I went and I wrote a tithing check and I left it on the counter in our office and suddenly, seriously, like 30 minutes later, there was a knock on the door and it was a lady from up the street and she found a box of diapers in the back of her closet that just happened to be in the size that Jen's wore. And she said, these don't fit my baby anymore. Can you use them? And I thought, you know what? Yes, I can use them. But the thought that I had is how did Heavenly Father know that I would be placed in that situation and that box of diapers would be saved for me when I exercised my faith? And I think a lot of times that Heavenly Father waits for us to exercise faith in Him to be able to bless he wants us to act and he wants us to do the things that we know to be true and it's knowing that um, he is there to help us to help guide and direct us with, to achieve our own personal plan and i'm grateful that we have such an example in our in our savior that we can always look to him through the scriptures and through our prophets and know exactly what he wants us to do. The example that we're supposed to follow so that we can return to our Father in Heaven. And I know that all of you girls have challenges in your life at certain times and at different and different things. And I know that as, as you practice faith in Heavenly Father and you put into practice the things that you know are true, that he will bless you. And I pray that you can make you Jesus Christ. He's the one who healed the leper and who brought the dead to life. He's the one who fed the hungry and who gave the blind their sight. He's the one who walked on water, then he brought them safe to shore. And whenever you may need him, he's the one you're looking for. So let him in, and he will take away your pain. When you feel his love, you'll never be the same. Come on to Christ, come on to him. And by his grace be made holy again. He's calling your 
Yeah.